a setting that was not really a full-on professional recording session. Uh, had we had that opportunity, the songs could have turned out much better. Right. But, uh, you know, it, we had limited resources, and we did the best we could. Mm. So that was it. Okay. Um, you know, um, and uh, so moving on, I mean, we... I wish we had done more original stuff, to be honest with you. Mm. But you, but you really, you get what we used to call back in the day. We say we get, you get trapped, and you get trapped into this. Okay, you're a dance band or you're an entertainment band, and all this and that. Uh, you're getting on the stage. You're getting off the stage six nights a week, playing six sets a night. Uh, that's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. And people used to envy, like, oh, you guys got it great. So, well, not not really. Uh, we don't make that much money, uh, and we're working our tails off from, you know, eight at night until two in the morning, playing six sets, six nights a week, and then we're trying to rehearse uh, to keep up with the current stuff, and occasionally go off and be creative and write a song. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or you have old songs that you've written that you're trying to bring off the shelf and try and vamp those up. Right. But it, 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 you kind of get trapped into that, and. Uh, you know, the creativity part is hard to capture once you get in those routines. And then the, and a lot of it's also travel, you know, where we traveled quite a bit. And uh, primarily Lake Tahoe and, and Las Vegas, mainly Tahoe. But uh, those were great times, too. I mean, we played all over the Bay Area, plus Tahoe and Vegas. I mean, we played at the Park Tahoe and Hara, Harris and Tahoe, Sahara and Tahoe. Um, uh, Vegas, we played at the Hilton and Sahara. And these gigs were, were great. It also gave us some new contacts, you know, in the entertainment world. Yeah. You know, we met all sorts of celebrities. Well, getting to that, getting to that, I was going to ask oh, a okay. question. Um, I'm glad you came there because um, now you, you did all these venues. Uh, can you talk about some of your favorite celebrities that you've met? Yeah, I mean, some really stand out to me. Um, uh, we were playing one night, um, and it was in the winter months, and we were up at Harris on the 18th floor, and I'm um, on stage playing, and I looked across the stage beyond the booth, and who's standing there watching us, listening to us? Clint Eastwood. I went, oh, my God, there's Clint Eastwood. And as it turns out, him and his wife were having dinner in the summit on the other side of the building on the same floor. Mm -hmm. And so on our break, we all went over to the summit to see him. And there he was sitting in the lounge there with Sandra Locke, <laughs> uh, having, a, having a beer, listening to the Curex, the keyboard player and the harp player. Mm -hmm. So I went over and introduced myself, met Clint Eastwood and Sandra. They were in town to... Uh, ski at the John Denver Celebrity Pro-Am at uh, Heavenly Valley. So it was kind of a, you know, a bunch of celebrities in town to, that John Denver was able to gather up to raise money for his cause. Uh, the Celebrity Pro-Am was a fundraiser or a uh, non-profit. I don't, I don't remember specifically what the name of it was, but it was John Denver's thing. So I met John Denver, too. Um, met Stephen Stills. I uh, met the Four Tops. In fact, Rocket got to be pretty good friends with the Four Tops. They've stayed at the same Bavarian village that we stayed at. And we saw them all the time. And their dressing room was right next to ours and Harris. Uh Met Lou Rawls. Lou Rawls came by. Uh, um, a bunch of people. And, you know, plus a lot of the other bands that came into town for usually two weeks at a time. And, you know, we were luck very lucky to play in Harris for the entire summer once. It was like a 12-week gig. I mean, we were there when Harvey's blew up, so that was exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was pretty crazy at the time. You know, there was so much going on. And, you know, back then, the showrooms had headliners, you know, and uh, it's not like it is now, you know. So you had different levels of entertainment. You had like a rocket playing at certain venues, either doing a show in a cabaret or providing, you know, entertainment, dance music, six nights a week, six sets a night. 
Um, and then you had shows like nostalgia shows like Paul Revere and the Raiders would come into town. This band called Rain, which is the Beatle tribute band. Uh, dance shows, you know, they were, uh, they were a lot of fun to see the dance shows. And then the headliners, you know, they were, we went and saw, uh, we went and saw Tom Jones once. I remember doing that at the Sahara, the main showroom. And we saw all sorts of, we saw Bill Cosby, we saw all these headliners. And it, it was great because we would get comped to go to the shows, uh, working in, in the entertainment of Tahoe. So on our night off, we would try to get in and go see one of these shows for free. And that was a lot of fun. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild. That's, 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 that's pretty neat that you can also do your work and also be among all these people that you can yep. meet, you know, and uh, have access to, especially comp on those shows. That's, uh, oh, yeah, that's it was really else. great because, you know, uh, we would just, you know, we would always tip the maitre d' and he'd give us a good booth to sit in or a seat up front, depending on what the show was, where we'd want to sit. And, uh, uh, you know, one of the advantages of knowing the entertainment directors and uh, the maitre d' people, and uh, they knew who we were because they'd come see us. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was great. Well, I want to get to this part here where... Um where we have a couple of band members that are not around anymore, and uh, yeah. one, one of them is Marty Gaskins, which you should you knew very well. Um, oh yeah. I'd like you to talk about Marty, what he did with the band, and uh, what kind of a person he was. Yeah, well, uh, Marty, um, bass player, all the years in Rocket, lead vocal, background vocal, very good bass player. Um, very. Uh, very talented, very personable, and he had a lot of personality on stage, too. And uh, he was uh, quite uh, popular um, amongst everybody. He was friends with practically everybody. Um, and him and I got to be, uh, besides just really close bandmates, we were, you know, really good friends, and we actually shared a couple of apartments together, uh, living together as a uh, we were the two single guys <laughs> um, at the at the time. Yeah. At the time. So uh, yeah, we would basically share an apartment and you know and uh, split the rent and uh, that that came in handy because of the affordability. But uh, you know it was uh, um, very very uh, you know interesting throughout the, the years and the struggles we had uh, up and down and you know eventually. Uh, you know, uh, as as time went on and and the gigs were starting to go away, um, and we all kind of saw the writing on the wall, where it's like you know we, we can't consistently book ourselves anymore, and nobody was really interested in getting out and traveling half the year or even or even a quarter of the year, you know. Um, then they're done that and. Um, uh, it really just came down to where it was time uh, to go different directions. Um, so with that being said, you know, I had already moved at, at another location. So Marty was living with some other people. And um, so Dana and Ross went different directions. And and then Marty, Marty and I went briefly with this band, um, that I did, I wasn't there very long, but he continued to go on with that for a while. But I was contacted by Dana, uh, I think it was 11 years later, uh, to tell me the bad news, the sad news that Marty had passed away. So uh, it was really a shock to me, and um, we all three attended his funeral, and that was the first time I had seen Dana uh, and Victoria. Um, in 11 years, I think, 12 years. And that was the last time I saw them. So that was 1996. So, yeah, that was uh, not a lot, not a good time and quite a shock to everybody that, unfortunately, um, he had an end of, end of life at a very early age. I think he was 46. 
and um, it was sad time for everybody. And it was a great turnout for the uh, funeral. A lot of friends and people I hadn't seen in years, and uh, so there was a little bit of reminiscing going on yeah. at, after the funeral, where we had a gathering mm -hmm. and and just sort of talked amongst ourselves about you know a lot of things. Well, that, that but. Um, it was a sad deal. It really was. Yeah. Marty was a great guy, man. Well, that, that that tells you how many people, you know, wanting to show up and reminisce about him. How how many people oh, yeah. that he uh, he knew and affected, you know, throughout oh, his yeah. life. Oh yeah, he affected a lot of people's lives. And like I said, I don't think he had an enemy in the world, you know. And uh, like I said, he got along with everybody, mm -hmm. and uh, he had quite the stage presence. And, um, he loved music, he loved playing music, and he loved doing the gigs. And uh, But eventually, uh, you know, he, he decided to get out of the music as well. And I don't know exactly what year that was, but he did yeah. uh, step aside. He stepped aside as well and, and tried some new things in his life. Yeah, that, that's that's just too bad. Um, um, you know, and... And only three years later, Doug had died also. So it was... Yeah, uh, you had told me that. You gave me a little more background on Doug. I never met the guy, and I, I don't, you know, right. have a lot of information on him. And it was sad to hear that he passed away three years after Marty. Yeah. Was, but, um, yeah, you was, know, it's, um, like I, was, I said, uh, um, you know, Dana, Ross, and, uh, I'm sorry, Victoria, and... Um, Marty, um, obviously, who took? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. comparing that. Uh, you know, it's sad to see both of them go within three years of each other. I mean, that's just. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, sometimes it's tough to deal with. You know, life in a certain way. If uh, you know, even though that um, you know, Rocket lasted for you know ten years. Uh, yep. And the people that affected it was a. Uh, even though it was a lot of hard work and stuff, it was a high time, and it's almost like when you're out of that, you're you're just a normal person again, you know. And some people exactly. can't handle that, so exactly, um, yeah. So, so that's uh, you know, it's a sad ending for sure. Uh, two of the members of Rocket, you know, unfortunately, uh, um, you know, left at an early age. Uh, it's too bad. Well, that's why I thought it was important to bring back the music so they won't be forgotten, you know. They, yeah, and well, I should part. go on record saying thank you, Mark, for doing all this. It was quite shocking to me when I was contacted about your project and uh, bringing back a bunch of old memories. And in closing, for me, I'd like to say thank you to all the fans and friends and family, you know, over the years that helped support us. And... Uh, we got through a lot with, with, with that group of people that followed us everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. We had a group of fans that came up to Tahoe all the time, we came to Vegas. I mean, it was like, it was incredible. And, uh, you know, these people uh, were, not, were not just fans. They all became, a lot of them became friends. So it was great. All right. Well, well thank you very much for the, your time, Jeff. And, uh, sure. And uh, that was a... A lot of good, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good memories, and I appreciate it. So, um, that's that's All right. About well, it. Uh, I look forward to hearing uh, whatever your edits are going to be, and see what see what gets out there, and um, and uh, listen to the uh, the other interviews as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. All right. Thank you. All right.